Hey, this is Paul Martin and Ray the Roadie for the Rock and Roll Chicago podcast. How you doing today, Ray? I'm doing good. And how are you today? I'm doing just fine. Thank you. Just fine. You know, well, I was brushing I was my at, hair. You brushing your hair? Yeah. Awesome. I was at the store today, man. I was walking down this aisle and I, I look and man, this, this one dude, he looked like a lady. Really? Yeah, man. It's, it's crazy. It's kind of weird. There's a song like that, you know. I thought there was a song like that. Yep. Isn't it Aerosmith? Yep, it sure is. Yeah. I mean, it, it, then there's a, then there's a bu- bunch, bunch of these guys there, man. They're a real motley looking crew. And oh. uh, I, I wanted to stay away from them. I mean, it's like, oh. Sounds like nothing but a good time to me. Yeah, it, it, it could have been, I suppose. I suppose <laughs> okay, you know. enough of the puds. Then I went to Starbucks. <laughs> and what happened there? I got some coffee and... When I was mixing it all up with the other stuff, I wound up, I had, I, I poured sugar on me. Oh, did, did you? I did. I was, that was a mess. Oh, was, boy, that's terrible. We ought to talk to somebody that plays Starbucks? this kind of music. Oh. oh, oh, I thought you meant talk to somebody at Starbucks. We could talk to somebody at Starbucks, too. I don't know why. At every star. Let's do a podcast from every Starbucks. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah I'm sure people would be interested in that. Today we're at uh, <laughs> yeah. Mount Vernon, Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could just do Chicago ones. Yeah, that would, Chicago that would take, area. Chicago area would probably take us a year or two. Oh, There's yeah. a lot of them. Yeah. Well, well, today uh, enough with the puns. That's what I said because we are talking uh, with uh, we talked with Brian Durbin of Hairbangers Ball, uh, the '80s glam metal rock band. Who uh, yeah, they're they're really a good band. They're a really they're, good band and. Uh, I, I've I've had the chance to see them, and they're very they're very good. I have seen them a number of times myself. They're uh, they're really tight. The music sounds great. They definitely look the part. Yes, they do. Definitely look the part. And man, they they, they play a lot of shows. I mean, when I'm looking around, who's playing where? They they just pop up all the time. Now his name is Brian Durbin. That's his real name, but maybe we should tell everybody his his stage name is actually Mick Yeager. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, that's and, and people know your stage name is Paul Tequila. That's right. And I'm Ray Crown Royal. <laughs> or Bourbon. <laughs> Ray Bourbon. That's right. But yes, uh, uh, they're a unique band. They are a orig- an original 80s glam rock band. Yes, yes, they are. And uh, speaking of originals, I think they've come up with one uh, that we'll be playing here. So let's get to it and see what uh, Brian had to say about the band. Let's take a listen. How you doing, everybody? Welcome to today's show. Uh, today we're speaking with Brian Durbin, who is uh, uh, with uh, with eighties glam metal band Hairbangers Ball. How you doing, Brian? Hey, I'm Brian. doing great. How are you guys? We're doing great. awesome. Doing great. So uh, actually, when you guys first reached out to uh, the Hairbangers page, we actually thought you were the original lead singer of Hairbangers Ball because his real name. Is, is Paul, uh, Martin. Paul Martin? Yeah. So, right. so we were like, when did Paul start putting on podcasts? Huh? <laughs> and then we found out it wasn't him. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know that. And it's, as a matter of fact, I met him once, and I've actually worked with the band, but it was boy, it had to be back by two thousand six or so, two thousand seven. Um, I, I had, uh, I had, you guys did a show at Sox Park. And I helped set up the gear because I, uh, the company I worked for did sound for you that day. Oh, right on. Uh, who was Jim Morris? I don't know if you know Jim Morris and JLM Productions. I don't. I wasn't at that show. I've only been in the band for the past five years. So I was probably somewhere in college at that time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I figured you figured you might, uh, but maybe some of the other people know. So, but um, so tell us a little bit about the band, when the band got started. And, and then uh, I, if, if, if you have the history, I'm, I'm, I assume, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope I don't botch this, but uh, here goes <laughs> nothing. Okay. So Hairbangers Ball has been around for about 20 years. 
um, this May, May 11th will be 20 years of Hairbangers Ball. Uh, the band was originally started in Chicago and is played all across the Midwest, the U.S. Um, and they've even done some international stuff long before I was in the band. But um, yeah, it's it's the the original tribute to the 80s as uh, our graphic designer actually just named us one day. Like, <laughs> I don't know. We, we got some we got some uh, proofs back. Um, during the time that I've been in the band, we got some proofs back for some artwork and it said the original tribute to the eighties. And we're like, eh, that sounds pretty good. We'll stick with that. Um, but yeah, the band's been around for about 20 years playing covers of you know, the eighties hair metal genre, Motley Crue, Guns N' Roses, Poison, Def Leppard, all that great stuff. And all the good um, stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, essentially the band was just started to get paid to party <laughs> is really all it, <laughs> is really all it was from my understanding. And then, um, yeah, my involvement, I've been in the band for about, um, five years now. I sing, I play a little bit of guitar in the band from time to time. And then I've, um, I've taken on all of our social media and stuff like that too. So I'm like the singer slash marketing guy for the band, I guess you would call it. So how'd you get in the band? I got in the band by playing in a bunch of other bands and just not going away. And then, <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I've, I've been playing, you know, in this area probably for about, probably for about a decade, maybe even a little bit more than a decade at this point in time. I'm 34. Um, I started singing for an original band called Love Blast when I was 20. It's my band that I wrote all the songs for and stuff. Yeah, I just I I started playing in other local cover bands. I was in a band called On Fire. I was in a band called Platinum. And then um eventually just yeah, one day I got a I got a text message from Jennifer saying that they needed a new lead singer and um asked me to come over to audition and I did and I got the gig and now I'm here. Now with the band going for 20 years, uh are there any original members? Uh, there's one original member left. That's uh, Jennifer Remus, aka Polly Pants. Polly Pants, yeah. Yeah, we we've all got our own quirky little um, stage names. If right. you will. Mine in the band is Mick Yeager. Um, Do you like some Yeager once in a while? Do you? Uh, I like it too much, actually. <laughs> uh, I yeah. like it too yeah. much, but um. That's coming from Paul Tequila. Yeah, well, right on. Paul I, used tequila. Paul, ah. I used to be Paul Yeager myself, but because uh, I had uh, I had a fetish for Jaeger bombs, but uh, but I had yeah. to quit it. I had to quit it. So, yeah, I haven't had to quit it yet, but I, I'd be lying if I would if I didn't say I didn't pace myself a little bit better. I, you learn you learn how to get in your own rhythm after five years in the band of you know how to do it. I mean, yeah, that's right. So Polly Pants or, or Jennifer is the uh, is the only uh, original member, and uh, who who else is in the band now? Uh, we've got. Um, I would say if we're going, let's go chronologically, shall we? I don't know why this camera is all. Yeah, it's but, a little blurry. Uh, it's, is is this an audio only? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I won't bother with this. Yeah. Don't worry. You know, about it. It gets... I thought I was having a stroke or something. I was. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So um, I I've, we've got everything positioned for when the guests get here right. later. We've actually got like this multi camera switchboard here. It's pretty cool, but um, yeah, this this whole new setup is you know all sorts of fine tuning. But in any event, um, there we go. It just came back in picture. All right, cool. The original, <laughs> the original is, uh, Polly, Polly pants. And then, um, Claire crush has been out of, in and out of the band. I would say for about 10 to 11 years at this point in time. Um, I guess the next most recent member of the band would be me. I've been in the band for about five years. Um, our bass player, Rod Viper, his real name, John Masak. He is, uh, he's been in the band for just about as long as I have. Um, and then we've got, um, Jack Charlotte, whose real name is Seth Shulman. He, um, he's been in, he's been in the band for a little over a year now. And then, um, we recently got a, uh, new guitar player in September named Daryl diamond, AKA Marcus Johansson is his real name. And you can check him out at Johansson He's the only, he's the only member of the band that has his own website. So that's the only reason he's, 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 that's why he got the plug and stuff. Oh, he's, okay. He's very <laughs> smart. He's very smart, man. <laughs> and he shreds. What, what's uh, what's Claire's name? 
Uh, Claire Crush, but her real name is Claire Andreic. Oh, okay. All right. All right, I missed that one. But I don't know if these people want me saying their real names or whatever, but you guys know mine, so I busted all of them. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's right. We'll still call them by their stage names. Yeah. So now you, you said you wrote some original material, right? Are you played an original band? Did you write material or, or do you still write material? I still write material all the time. I try to write a song a week. Um, if, if I can, um, that's, I, I love, you know, playing covers and hair bangers, but I'm really lucky to be playing my favorite style of music for a living. I mean, what more can you ask for? But if I, if I was being perfectly honest, my number one joy in life is writing and recording my own music, whether or not anybody else hears it, that's my favorite thing to do with my time. So what, what can what, what in genre, what vein is your, is the direction of your music? Go. Uh, it sounds a whole lot like Hairbanger's Ball. Does it? That list. It's just like there's there's not an ounce of me that's phony when it comes to this this type of music. This is the music that I'm all about. Like I'm not I'm not secretly like a you know closet like U2 fan on the side or anything or like I'm not you know not that there's anything wrong with U2 or I'm you know like I'm j- I'm just saying my music is 80s hair metal music and you know it's so when I'm on stage with Hairbangers Ball, it's not an act. It's not a gig. It's, it's it, that's what I'm all about is this type of music. And the music that I write is, you know, pretty close in style to what Hairbangers Ball plays in our set list, which is why Hairbangers Ball is releasing an original song on March 12th, available on streaming platforms everywhere. Awesome. Oh, very yeah, cool. That's the first one. The very first one. Yeah. We, f- we figured that, well, um, you know, after 20 years of 10, being right? a band, <laughs> after 20 years of being a band, we, maybe we should try <laughs> or something like, maybe we should try to write a song or something. I don't know. So what, what's the name of it? The name of the song is All Aboard the Bang Train. Yeah, every, every, it's something that everyone has called. Everybody kind of in the circle of Hairbangers Ball has always kind of called the band over the years for whatever reason. It's just been called the Bang Train. Um, and so, yeah, that was the inspiration for the song. And so, yeah, the song's called All Aboard the Bang Train. And uh, it's about being in Hairbangers Ball and Hairbangers Ball fans. And well, so well, there was uh, so this would be the first time anybody's heard it because uh, with the COVID and stuff, you guys probably weren't playing much last year. Um, yeah, we really didn't play a whole lot. Not as, not as much as we normally play. I mean, normally the band is playing 150 shows a year, just all over the Midwest. Um, we definitely played more than most bands did. Um, yeah, the, the areas that we were playing in weren't heavily hit hard or, you know, I, I, I don't know. I'm pulling that out of my ass. So, <laughs> but uh, I, from what I understand, the areas we were playing were allowed to have shows and you know it was it's kind of weird because they're all like limited capacity shows you know 20 percent seated at tables wearing masks and stuff and you know it's not ideal for a rock concert but what the nice thing is with the type of music that we play people will actually show up just to watch you play music whereas like you know let's say it's like a disco band or whatever if people People can't dance. Nobody's coming to the show. Like, right. sorry, right. sorry. You know, I mean, maybe I don't know. Disco is pretty incredible music, actually, if you actually really pay attention to it. But um, in any event, yeah, this type of music, thankfully, the type of people that listen to it like watching a band play music, which is pretty rare that I've found in terms of like the, you know, the cover party scene. So we're we're really lucky in that 
um, with these types of shows, we've still been able to get out there and play because people want to watch us play. Well, well, uh, and now speaking of people that watch you play, they're called uh, Bang Masters. Is that right? Bang Masters. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Well, how did that came up with that? I don't know. It came. It came about long before I was in. I was in the band. I mean, sometimes we call the fans bangers. Sometimes we call them um, bangomaniacs. But Bang Masters is the one that sticks the most. And I noticed you've got some. Um... You've got some uh, some some swag to go with that too. I know oh yeah, we've website, you just got a lot of a lot of different swag. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, one of one of our favorite bands is Kiss. So I mean, we've taken notes to the whole merchandise oh, yeah. thing. That's for sure. And, and masks too, right? And masks. yeah, we've we've got we've actually got two different types of masks. We've got one mask. Um, Actually, I, want, I might even have it in my pocket right now. I don't. Um, yeah, we've got one mask with our logo on it. And then we've got another mask that has a very handsome gentleman's face on it. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at that right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. And you mentioned carrying it in your pocket. I mean, that's something different than what we had to do a year ago at this time, isn't it? Yeah. Well, actually, we are we are just about at the year mark. Right. I remember we we finished our last full capacity show at the Bluebird in Bloomington, Indiana on okay. on March 14th. And actually the Bluebird in Bloomington, Indiana is actually the venue that our song All Aboard the Bank Train is all about. We kind of call that like our home away from home because even though, you know, we're a Chicago band, we're in Bloomington, Indiana. Um every you know, in normal times four to six weeks lately. I feel like it's been one of the only places we've been playing. We've been there like every three weeks lately. So, but yeah, no, we're, we're really lucky to be playing. It's a, it's a really great. It's a great historic, college town. Right. Oh yeah. It's a great college town. Um, it's a really historic venue. Everybody, not everybody's played there, but I mean, right. everybody from, you know, base nectar to Kings of Leon and, you know, John Mellencamp has played there before. John Mayer has played there. And Hairbangers Ball plays there all the time. That's cool. <laughs> I would like love to have band. the bank account of the rest of those people one of these days, but um, you know, <laughs> we're doing okay. The, um, so now you said you're 34 years old. So you must have just been born when this music was happening. How did you, how did you uh, learn to, uh, for the appreciation for this type of music? Yeah, I was born in 1986. So near the latter half of the decade of decadence. So, um, I would, I got into this music in a really weird way. I got into this music because of, um, the movie, Mrs. Doubtfire. Okay. And, uh, it came out in 1993 and there's a, there's a montage scene in that movie where Mrs. Doubtfire is like kind of just rocking out with a broom and rocking out with a vacuum cleaner and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, and, I, I just thought it was hilarious when I was a kid. And the song in the background is dude looks like a lady by Aerosmith. Okay. And that was, I was about seven years old when I saw it's that appropriate movie. for Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah. 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 And that was, that was the moment for me where like my ears woke up for the first time. I'm like, what is that? You know? Cause I, <laughs> I, I liked album covers. Um, like my dad had a tape of survivors. I have the tiger and he had a tape of ACDC highway to hell. That um, I I just thought were cool album covers when I was a kid, but I didn't. I hadn't. My ears weren't awake yet, you know, or anything. Yeah, yeah. So when that uh, when that scene in Mrs. Doubtfire came on, even though Mrs. Doubtfire is doing all this, you know, crazy stuff, the thing that really drew me in was that Aerosmith song. I had never heard anything like that before in my life. I had never heard that, you know, you know, loud guitars. Yeah, yeah all that kind of stuff and uh you know just really tight harmony vocals you know it was just it was really cool and then obviously like the guitar solo being one of the featured things of the song like really um really drew me in you guys do any aerosmith we do some aerosmith yeah we do um we do dude looks like a lady it's been a while since we've done that one um 
And that one's really fun too, because my cousin will come up on stage with us uh, from time to time whenever we do it. And he's available and he dresses up in a Mrs. Doubtfire outfit and <laughs> pops, pops right in at the guitar solo and stuff. Nice. And he usually gets a really cool crowd response whenever we get to do it. And um, since this is airing after the music video is released, he's actually in the music video dressed up as Mrs. Doubtfire because we based the video off of... Um, we were we were watching a bunch of old videos from these bands and our favorites were nothing but a good time by poison and yeah. loving an elevator by aerosmith and lick it up by kiss those were like the three videos where we were like all right let's make just this crazy wacky over the top 80s style video and um there's all sorts of weird cutaways in the love in an elevator music video like there's you know there's a midget dancing with a professional basketball player you know there, there's there's all sorts of crazy stuff going on um and so we decided to kind of tribute that in our video with mrs doubtfire and uh you know so, since we ripped off love in an elevator enough in the video we figured we might as well go all the way <laughs> So there's a live video uh, or live shoot. Uh, so I wish it was, I wish it was a live shoot. And that was the original intention. When I first started writing the song was we wanted to shoot our very first music video at the bluebird in Bloomington, Indiana, in front of a crowd, because um, you know, the bluebird is a really unique crowd in that they're just rabid. They're crazier than any crowd that we play. I mean, we play, it's not the biggest crowd that we play for, right, but there's, right. there's an intensity in that town that is really unique to it and really special. And, um, you know, you never know what you're going to get at a hairbangers ball show in Bloomington. You know, we always try to, th that really is our home away from home. So we wanted to shoot it in front of a crowd over there, but because of the whole COVID thing, we couldn't do that. So we did shoot the video at the Bluebird on the stage in the Bluebird. But right now our shows are limited capacity and you know, right. everybody's sitting down and it would have just been a real drag if we shot it in. Right. You want like, people cheering and, and going crazy and stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now to, to as kind of a way around that, we're also re releasing a supplementary lyric video um, a week afterwards, just so people can see the lyrics for the song, because we really, we really want Bloomington, Indiana to know like, you know, how much they mean to us and how much we care about them. So in the lyric video, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of pictures from our last show there before COVID hit on, um, in, I think it was March 14th. Right. Um, and we were playing in front of a packed house that night. So, I mean, it's, it was, it's a re it was shocking actually to see how many people were coming to see us before all this happened in Bloomington. So hopefully at some point in time, maybe we'll get to shoot a live video at a crowd over there. That would be ideal. But first we got to see if people like the song. I mean, I don't, it's, it's a really weird thing with it being a cover band. So we don't, we don't know if people are going to be excited about the song or if they're going to be like, ah, oh, just shut up and get back to the Bon Jovi. Will you, you like, not? come on, where's the poison? We don't, we don't know. We're, we're Have you really, played it live. We did play it live one time, but it was a limited capacity crowd. And it was on a Wednesday when we shot the video and it was in front of a bunch of like, that's their big college night there, mainly because they sell beers for 25 cents. Right, right, um, right. So where's this place I'm heading over there. It's, <laughs> it's called the, it's called the Bluebird in Bloomington, Indiana. And to, to put it, to put it into perspective, the show sold out before they even announced who the band was. So the, the, the people who were seeing the show didn't care what show they were going to. They just wanted 25 cent beer. Um, so we tried the song out in front of, the the college crowd a couple times and what was really cool about it is they knew songs like um like when we did pour some sugar on me of course they know that song because that's you know that's played in every sporting arena that they've ever been to um but you know certain songs like even big songs in our set was like round and round by rat which was just recently in a geico commercial right these kids were looking at us like what is this song that you're playing right now but the really cool thing about when we played this song is when the chorus hit by the second time, maybe not even by the second time, maybe even by the near end of the first time, these kids were singing the words to the chorus. That's cool. 
That's cool. It was it was really cool, and it it was almost kind of creepy. It was like, uh oh, what are we getting ourselves into here? Like, you know, could the original turn into something? We'll see. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a great feeling to first of all have people do that uh, to sing along with your song, and uh, and and it's a great feeling just going knowing you're going to a, a venue that that people appreciate what you're doing, you know, and Absolutely. you get it pumps you up, right? I mean, oh, yeah. Gets you excited to, to, hey, we're going to Bloomington. We're going to play the Bluebird. We're excited about it, you know? Yeah. Put it, put it this way. Like, we go to the Bluebird every three to four weeks. You know, it's a long drive. It's a yeah. really long drive. You know, we load our own gear. We don't, we don't have any roadies or anything like that. Um, we, we do, we do all of our own stuff. And, you know, it, it, it really does take its toll on you, especially if you get, if you indulge a little bit at the bluebird too, um, which <laughs> yeah. as, as we do. So right. it really does beat you up, but we still, um, we still come back from more and more punishment every single time because this, the crowds are just so electric there. I mean, I really, I really think, and I've been saying this on our podcast for a while now, I really think that if you're a Hairbangers ball fan, um, you really should see a Hairbangers ball show at the bluebird at some point in time, just make a trip out there, you know, after, after, as soon as we can go back to full capacity crowds, at least I don't want anyone from Chicago coming out there right now, unless yeah. they want to, unless they want to watch people play their instruments. But if you want to watch a party and you want to see something really crazy, you know, actually, I just put out a press release to a bunch of different publications recently. And there was a quote that I used in there that, um, that really sums it up best. Let me pull this up. It'll take me just a second. I got it right here. Um, but somebody, somebody said this um, to the Writer Magazine and Film Series, um, which is a which is a uh, it's a magazine out in Bloomington, Indiana. October on their October November twenty nineteen issue of the Writer Magazine and Film Series, a uh, local Bloomington, Indiana resident told reporter Anthony Scott Piat. People talk about how great the Bluebird is. I went for Hairbanger's Ball and wasn't impressed. There was pushing, shoving, rudeness, bras being thrown, people practically having sex on the dance floor, and the bathroom reeked of weed. And then the end of that paragraph, it says, Hairbanger's Ball would like to thank Sarah for her certification of authenticity. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry we gave you a rock concert, Sarah. Yeah. I hope you'll recover one day. <laughs> yeah. Lord knows yeah. I haven't. Yeah. Who knows? She may never. I don't uh, think so. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Ray, Ray, what are you doing? I'm getting my bluegrass on. I'm playing my banjo, except there seems to be something wrong with the strings. Well, you know, Ray, GHS makes strings for all types of instruments. Electric and acoustic guitar, bass guitar, mandolin, ukulele, and even banjo. Then I'm getting new GHS strings and my banjo will sound better. Uh, I don't think it's the strings, Ray. GHS are easy to play with rich, full balance tone, available in many different gauges. Great for all musical styles, so if you play... Play with the best. Play GHS strings. Tell, tell me a little bit about. Uh, I, I noticed I went back to some of your news stuff on your on your website, and you mentioned a band of the month. What was what was that idea about? Uh, band of the month is something that started right before I started. Right before I joined the band, I think they started it in 2015, maybe tail end of 2014. But band of the month is basically our dedication to one specific specific artist will do a rock block of at least four songs, if not more, depending on who the artist is. Um, you know, we'll, so we'll do a rock block dedicated to Motley Crue. And when, when we do Motley Crue band of the month, we'll do like eight songs because we can never, we can never agree to, you know, what Motley Crue song, what four Motley Crue songs we should do. So we double right. it because Motley Crue just has so many great songs and people are always asking us to do different ones. Um, uh, Def Leppard will usually do a lot of songs of sure. too. And then some of the, like some of the deeper bands, like we did Dokken band of the month um, in February, right before, um, right before the whole COVID thing. And actually I think it, I think they were the March band. I think that was the one that got cut off early and Dokken. We only did four songs just because, um, you know, right. unfor unfortunately, 
there's not really any docking songs that are being played in sporting arenas that. Right. You know, oh, right. Or even, much, much as I love docking, love yeah. me some docking. Yeah. But, or even, or, even in mainstream music or whatever, you know, mainstream uh, radio or anything. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, um, I Unless know, you're a Dokken fan, I've like I've got every one of their albums, so I'm a big Dokken fan. So that that I could listen. You know, anything you played, I'd know it. And it was a real bummer for it to get um, to get shut down too, because those songs are really hard, and we worked really hard to to get those songs together. Um, but yeah, so we only got to play them for two weeks, and then um, I think yeah, I think we did four Dokken shows. And then uh, that, was, that was a wrap. But ho- hopefully, we'll, hopefully, we'll get back to doing some docking as soon as we can start playing a little bit more often. But so, did you guys uh, miss a, quite a few shows last year? You said you did play, you did some playing, but did you can't have a lot of cancellations? Yeah, we we missed out on almost the whole summer. I mean, almost every major big festival was canceled. Um, it was a real, real drag. Um, Especially since um, our calendar is in in 2019, the band was just steamrolling and putting on a lot of great shows and, um, you know, a lot of emails coming in every single day wanting to book the band. And we were like, we were looking at our calendar for 2020 that was booked a year out in advance. And we're like, wow, this is you know, I, obviously I've only been in the band for five years, but, um, Polly was like, this is on paper. This will be the best year the band has had in 10 years. Um, so we we were really, really looking forward to 2020. We were like, all right, this is our year again. Like we're, you know, yeah, we talked to a lot of bands who said they were really ready to play and they had a lot of, a lot of dates on the books, but, but then nothing happened. I mean, obviously we know what happened, but yeah well the, the nice the nice thing for us is a lot of the contracts are just carrying over to, to right. this year so you know we're still going to be you know we don't have a date to spare in june right now we don't have a date to sp- we're we're booking up really fast for the rest of the year we're going into 2022 um so yeah i mean we you know as much as, as much as it really sucked we're we're bouncing back quite nicely you do a lot of festivals, right? A lot, a lot of festivals. Yep. Festivals are fun. <laughs> festivals are fun. Tell me about they the- absolutely. Ex- except for the one thing I will say is being a band like Hairbangers Ball festivals are just a little challenging sometimes because you know there's no indoor plumbing or <laughs> anywhere to uh, <laughs> anywhere to get you know dressed up. You know, I I'm a moron, but it takes me about like you know an hour and a half to actually get ready <laughs> for every single show i mean like just with all the clothes that we wear doing the hair up really big and warming up warming up the voice um so festivals are a little challenging in that there's not a whole lot of places to do that but the crowds that we play for at these festivals make it all worth it you either have to you have to have to make sure you get a trailer or something or, or, or change in your trailer or, we've, we've got a trailer we we change in our trailer sometimes but you know i mean a trailer from the from the place the a nice trailer with the bathroom in it and you know air conditioning and I, and, and a lot of a lot of places we do get that but right. um it's not something that happens all the time it's a luxury when it does does happen and we're always you know wildly grateful and those are usually the ones that we try to book instantly for the following (laughs) year (laughs) yeah so tell me about this whiskey a go-go thing you you did a show at the whiskey a go-go or yeah we did it we did a live stream on june 27th from the whiskey a go-go in hollywood where how'd you do that how did you get there i mean did you fly or yeah we flew um we flew you know, when everybody was afraid of flying and, you know, I mean, I know, you know, it's obviously not great to be flying right now, but right. w- things were definitely a little bit more uncertain then, but we took all the necessary precautions and stuff. Um, yeah, we flew out there, we rented some gear and um, just, we were blown away by how much the production exceeded our expectations. I mean, the, the whole team that they have over there is just top notch and completely pro 
And yeah, it was, it was really exciting. Really, really exciting. It was really cool to be playing those songs on that stage where all of those bands came from. It was kind of creepy in a little way, you know, cause a lot of bands, when they play the whiskey, a go, go, you know, it'll be a show where they're opening for someone like kicks, like, like, you know, a band from the eighties or, you know, Dokken or faster pussycat or something. But then, you know, the, the local openers, they have to sell, you know, pre-sale tickets and stuff like that. You know, they, you know, and sometimes there will be six or seven openers on the show before you get to the headliner. And, you know, they, they have to sell tickets. Like I had to, when I was in my early twenties, almost like a girl scout in a way, like, Hey, will right. you, will you buy know, pre-sale tickets to my show? And so yeah. I can hand the venue 80% of the money afterwards. <laughs> and 20%. We didn't have to do that. It was, it was really cool. Um, and, you know, we got the whole day with that legendary room. Um, the family over there is just absolutely incredible. They took us, you know, to the rainbow right afterwards. And we got to see the lair of the Hollywood vampires that, you know, um, Alice Cooper and all of his friends used to debaucherous in and stuff. And, um, yeah, it was, it was a really, really great experience. And it's, it's really surreal, you know, sitting on that stage, looking at the walls and seeing, you know, the faces that people that you're playing the songs of afterwards and knowing that you were the first band that got invited to play those songs there really meant a lot to me personally. Now you, you guys sold tickets for that and did a live stream, right? Yeah, they, it was a it was a digital event through Veeps, um, and yeah, there okay. were yeah we sold tickets through there, and yeah the the event went went quite nicely. So it, so no one can go back and watch that now, right? Um, I don't know that. Um, I don't know if you can or not. Um, I mean, I have the file of it. I don't know if we're going to put it on our website at, at some point in time. Um, there's a, a couple songs are up on our YouTube page. So you can see what the production is like on there. Like we did, um, we tried to put some of the songs that like not a whole lot of bands do up on YouTube. So we put Wild Child by Wasp up on our page. We put It's Not Love by Dokken on our page. Just, you know, because ev every 80s hair metal band has a video of them doing Living on a Prayer. What are you going to do that's different? You know, right, right. And, every, and everybody and their mother has an 80s hair metal band at this point in time. So, yeah, you know, what are you, what are you going to do that's unique? And we just like playing, you know, obviously we like playing all the hits, like nothing but a good time. And, um, kickstart my heart and all, all of those great songs, but there were a lot of great songs from that time period that were huge hits back then are just every bit as good now as they were back then. And it, it was just, it's a real shame for a lot of bands to be playing the same 30 songs. Right that every other band plays to me right. when I see that a lot of times I, I, I see that and I go, that band doesn't really listen to that music. Right. Mm -hmm. That band, that band, that band is going up yeah. on stage because this music is popular and people are paying attention to them and they're collecting, you know, a, a nice payday for playing some local music or whatever, you know, not a bad thing, but that band doesn't listen to this music. If they don't, if you don't dig deeper into the set list, that to me is the, most obvious factor that you don't actually listen to that music. Right. Play, play the deeper cuts, right? So, yeah. N I mean, not all of them. I, mean, we, right, I, think we, right. I think, you know, we, we do play to, you know, the average person that sees Hairbangers Ball. We, we're, we're very lucky to have a wide array of, of you know, we have, we have a really devoted following, but the average person that sees Hairbangers Ball sees the band probably one time a year. So, and we're lucky that, you know, because we do play, we, you know, we'll never turn our backs on, on the hits because that's what it made this band is playing the hits. But we also like to change up our set list, you know, to just keep it fun for us. And, you know, so we, we've added all sorts of great stuff to the set list. We've got, um, Polly, do you want to say hello to everyone? Or actually this, 
this is Je- yeah you're in the shot this is well this is actually uh this is jennifer right now hi jennifer um, how are you br- the, br- the brunette version is jennifer and then when she's blonde it's Polly pants <laughs> <laughs> well and also i i joined i joined the call um i joined the call with your username so it actually came up as jennifer remus okay. on there and i keep forgetting that i'm doing that to people all right, it's good to see you. Nice to yeah. see, see you. you. Thanks, thanks for doing this. On your end, but I can't wait to hear the whole thing. Yeah, it should be pretty cool. So, uh, so let me ask you with the, with the live show that you did, uh, uh, the live streaming show at the Whiskey Google. It, there was obviously no crowd there, right? Yeah, no crowd. And, no and crowd. so, was it tough to get the energy up in order to play? I mean, I mean, I mean, when you get you get the energy coming back from an audience, obviously it it it, it invigorates you, but was it tough? Was it tough doing it? Um, it wasn't tough to do that necessarily. What was tough was there are about five 4K cameras in this room right now. So if you're if you're if anything goes wrong, it's getting captured. So that was the nerve wracking yeah. part. But to be perfectly honest, it really wasn't hard to get in the mood for it because the band was just so good you know everybody yeah, yeah. is you know playing their balls off in this band you know the girls included they're they're playing their uh proverbial balls off sorry i'm the cat is oh. up <laughs> on the counter over here he likes to make appearances on our on our podcast so yeah, he right. just wanted to say hello but um yeah, no, the band was playing really well, but there was also an added incentive to um, to play, you know, as well as we could and get in the mood um, because the uh, the agent for TKO was sitting there watching the whole show. Um, the sound guy for UFO um, oh, really? and Sebastian Bach was the house sound guy over there. Um, so when, when you're in the room with the guy who mixes UFO all the time and you're in the <laughs> yeah. room with, yeah. uh, you know, the family that owns the whiskey, a go-go and the rainbow bar and grill, uh, you get your act together <laughs> really quick. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, how do we find you on Facebook and, and, uh, you whiskey, give us your website and, and so, uh, yeah, the, your, your, uh, your important social media stuff. Yeah. So the, the website is hairbangersball.com. The Facebook page, that's probably the place where we're most active would is uh, facebook.com slash hairbangers ball, all lowercase, all one word. And then our social media, Instagram and Twitter, you can find our username is at hairbangers ball. Um, if anyone's got pictures from our shows or anything or videos, you can hashtag them, hashtag hairbangers ball. And then, yeah, I mean, everything is pretty much just on every social media platform is just hairbangers ball. Very good. All lowercase, all one word. Well, we wish you continued success with the band and uh, another 20 years. What do you say? I, I, I would really very much like that. I mean, the, the nice thing about the type of band that this is, is, you know, the uh, somebody said this at one of our shows and I think it was at the Bluebird in Bloomington. They said, man, the thing I like about hair bangers ball is I get older and they stay the same age. So because, <laughs> because of that, maybe, maybe there will be another 20 years. I, I certainly hope so. I'm well, planning on it. In, in 20 years, I'll say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome hair bangers ball playing the oldies. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. <laughs> well, actually, actually, I think in some, in some places we were probably actually considered the oldies now. I mean, <laughs> yeah. You're, yeah. But, Cause I, I remember, I remember in the nineties when I, when I was going to elementary school, um, in the nineties, oldies was fifties music. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, it's, we're in the twenties now. So yeah. maybe it same is amount yeah. of time, same yeah. amount of time, but. Well, I think there's a resurgence of, of music from, from 20 years past every 20 years that music has a, has a resurgence. And so that means, uh, that means that the, uh, Hairbangers ball and the eighties stuff is going to be uh, really hot this uh, next decade. So I, I, I certainly hope so. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what to expect, but out of all the things that we've got going on, all I can say is I'm really excited. And um, even if, you know, nothing crazy happens and, you know, things just kind of keep going as the static 
status quo, we're still really lucky to be doing what we're doing. And I mean, what, what more can you ask for? I get to sing and scream the, the greatest songs of all time on stage and get paid to do it. And maybe, maybe, maybe to get a couple cores out of the deal too. So. <laughs> Very good. Well, thanks for joining us, Brian. We appreciate it. Yes. Thank thanks you. so much, guys. I really appreciate you having me. Thank you so much. This has been a lot of fun. No problem. See you guys really soon. That was Brian Durbin of uh, of 80s glam metal rock band Hairbangers Ball. Nothing but a good time. Ain't nothing but a good time. That's right. That was a lot of fun, man. Them guys have a ball playing that stuff. Yes, yes, they do. And uh, they do it quite well. Yes, they do. I mean, that's, uh, that's probably my favorite uh, genre. The 80s? I like, I, like, I like the 80s music. I do like it. Heavy oh, metal. Yeah. I really yep. like that. Yeah, I, I would say heavy metal now has actually changed a little bit, right? Yeah. I Back then so. it was just metal. Now it's heavy metal. Now it's heavy. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Back then it was more metal. Yeah. and uh, But it rocked, man. That, that, that music rocked. Yeah. And I wonder how it got the name metal. I don't know. Uh, a lot of symbol? Symbolism? <laughs> it could be. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe too much uh, glam? Maybe. Maybe it, it was a, quite a bit of glam back then. So that's right. That's right. Hair, but hair bangers ball does the glam well too. Yeah, they do. They do. They definitely played a part. Uh, and they're chomping at the bit to get back out there and uh, start entertaining all you folks out there. So uh, give them uh, give them a listen. Thanks once again to GHS Strings for sponsoring our podcast. And uh, and what else we got, Ray? Uh, we've got the Rock and Roll Museum on Route 66 in beautiful downtown Joliet, Illinois. Check them out at roadtorock.org. And when you go to their website, sign up to be a charter member. Hopefully they'll be opening up sometime this summer with their first exhibits. Okay. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll see you next week. See you next week. Rock on. Yeah. Rock and Roll Chicago podcast does not own the rights to any of the music that's played on this podcast. The music is used to promote the band or musicians that are interviewed. Rock and roll Chicago. Rock and roll Chicago.